If you're in business for yourself, you've got fans. Today on the show, we dig into how to find out who they are, how to engage to those fans, and how to get more. How's it going, everybody? Jason Croft here, the Credibility Craftsman. And today on the show, we've got Eric Swain. He is one of my favorite people, and he has one of the coolest jobs. He is, his whole responsibility is fan engagement for a company called Funimation. Funimation is a massive footprint of a company inside the anime world. And we, we dig into that a, a lot and, and exactly, exactly what they do, of course. Um, but the fact that, you know, anime as a whole is, is, is one of those massive little niches that, that a lot of people don't even know anything about, but is just a giant, giant industry and Funimation is one of the major players in that space and what we dig in today and why I really wanted to bring Eric on um, is to certainly tell that story of Funimation but also how it relates to you and your business and how you can take a lot of these lessons and apply them to your own business and believe it or not there's there's a lot of them and we dig into to all of that in this episode so let's jump in with Eric Swain Eric Swain, welcome. Thank Man, you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So thanks for uh, inviting me out to Funimation here, yeah. picking you up. It's one of my favorite people, Eric Swain. <laughs> I'm so excited. Our, our chance meeting the other day as we were running around with our kids. Yes, dad right. life, hashtag dad yes. life. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Eric has been on former show of mine. Yes. Yeah. And so I know the greatness <laughs> that is this man. And so I had to have him on this show. So tell me about your world right now yeah. with Funimation and your role there. Um, and this, what the heck is Funimation for the three people who don't know? Let's start there. So Funimation is the U.S.'s largest, North America's largest distributor of anime. Okay. We bring anime from our studio partners in Japan. We dub it actually here in Flower Mound, Texas. <laughs> and then we release it to audiences all over the world um, through uh, our home video products. We do all the home video. Uh, through our streaming service. We have like a Netflix for anime product called Funimation Now. Um, and also through things like broadcast TV. So if you've watched anime on Toonami on Cartoon Network, mm -hmm. um, that's us. That's us bringing that. Oh wow! So Funimation is you know the steward of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Attack on Titan, uh, and many, many, many other titles. Um, and most of the titles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say um, you know we're. The primary on, on practically every major cultural touchstone of anime, um, and then we partner with Crunchyroll and a lot of other titles as well. So okay. um, it, it's it's amazing when you think that the world of anime cranks out at least fifty new shows or seasons every quarter. Good. So and you know that's all the way from the awesome to the terrible. Sure, but <laughs> um, that's so much stuff oh, yeah. that, you know, we're not going to run out. <laughs> we're, right. we're not going to have that problem. <laughs> and it's, and it's massive. And it's one of those things that's, it's a, it's a gigantic little niche. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. I mean, um, the following is unbelievable and yet complete sectors of the, the, the world who've never even yes. heard of it or understand it. Yes, and until you're inside of it, you don't know. You oh, yeah. just don't know how big it is. <laughs> you know, I thought I was an anime fan before joining Funimation, and I'm, I have colleagues that put me to shame <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> in my, in my in their fandom. Um, but it, it, it is um, a huge fandom in that the amount of passion, the amount of attention, the amount of... Um, engagement that fans have with this mm -hmm. with this stuff is so huge and so powerful. That's uh, that's awesome, and that's really and that is your role. That is your I mean to put fuel on that fire mm -hmm. and and help facilitate all that. And, mm -hmm. and so, what is your technical role, and then how are you doing that? Yeah. So the title is senior director of fan engagement, okay. and 
my primary focus is about our audience. Mm -hmm. um, and I use that in the broadest possible term and understanding what our fans want, understanding who they are, and then being able to act on that in order to drive the goals that we have, okay. which are you know, about selling things. It's about sure. getting subscribers to our streaming service, that Funimation Now, I'm gonna plug that like crazy. Nice. Um, and then, you know, for these titles, for these brands, um, we are the steward of those brands for these Japanese studios. So mm -hmm. um, it does us good and does them good if we make these brands huge. Yeah, um, and so that's our job. And how are you doing that? What's what are some of those those things? I mean, oh you've man, got everything. From... <laughs> it's 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 what's so cool about what I do is that it's involving every single channel possible. Um, where before I may have been focused on pure digital channels, mm -hmm. we know now everything's digital. Sure. Um, and, and now I get to show that and bring that to life. So it's everything from um, uh, our email team, our PR our social team, our CRM, our paid media, um, all the way out to our conventions and our events that we do. Um, so, you know, in order to drive excitement, we could have everything from um, an email campaign mm -hmm. to a Reddit AMA to a 60 foot inflatable Shenron Dragon that we did at <laughs> Anime Expo. Nice. You know, and all of these have to drive those same goals. You know, are we moving the fandom? Are we growing the brand? Are we driving subscribership and purchase? And then and all that obviously stuff? different different aspects of those mm -hmm. are measured very differently. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And some I mean Ranging from here's the exact data all the way to yep. well, you can't really measure that. Well, but, what's yep. the ROI of a giant sixty foot inflatable right. dragon? You know, that's right. <laughs> that's hard to tell. Right. Um, but we can we can point to signals that we get. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of social signals that we get. There's a lot of anecdotal signals that we gotcha. get. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, are we keeping our licensors happy? You know, how do we measure that? Well, there's not a number, but we know <laughs> that relationship, and we know right. are we making that brand what it should be? Yeah. Um, so it's it's a lot of responsibility. It is literally with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, when you have a title like Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball anything put in your lap, that is a lot of power. Uh, yeah, it's very different to go start from scratch with a brand and go, how are we going to grow this? Yes. How are we going to do this? And here's yes. this thing that's already awesome. Don't screw it up. Yes. But make it better. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the fans to their very credit, will call you out on anything that <laughs> nice. you've done, oh, I bet. anything that they like, anything they don't like. Any, you, you cannot slip anything past them. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna happen. Uh, and everything that we do, I, I, I wish fans sometimes could be the fly on the wall to see how much we argue about and, and discuss and make sure that every single thing is as best as we can make it. Awesome. Um, so give me some examples of that. Like, like maybe some of that, that conflict there and like yeah. some details, but also examples, you know, more examples of kind of growing yeah. this. Well, a lot of what we deal with is we have a very, very tight relationship with our studios in Japan. You know, the, the studios that actually create this anime. Right. And they create it for the world, mm -hmm. of which we're a portion of that. Um, so when we bring it into a U.S. context, you know, we, we have to pivot a little bit and shift it a little bit to make it work for the Western audience. Um, and then we have to get a lot of things approved. So if we create a new piece of media, a new package, a new promotional item, we have to get that approved. And so very, very responsibly, these studios, this is their baby. They, every single title is their baby and they want to make sure that IP is taken care of. Right. And we want to make sure that IP performs well in the Western audience. So there's always this yin and yang, this back and forth. Okay, of, that of, makes sense. We have to discuss that together. We have to work together with them. Um, to where, you know, on titles like Dragon Ball, we have a very, very constant relationship with Toei. We are constantly talking with them. We're constantly in discussion with them. Um, and we're always working on, you know, how can we make Dragon Ball bigger? Mm -hmm. um, it's also hard in that we have to drive measurable things like subscribership and sales and that kind of thing. But it's often the immeasurable or less measurable things that uh, cause the measurable things to occur. So if you have a big audience and a big fandom and lots of passion, those are less measurable things. Right. But if you do that right, the money will show up. Gotcha. So how do we show that? How do we so do that? So you're constantly down parallel tracks. Yeah. Right. On those two endeavors. Yeah. 
There are some things that are really, really, really super measurable, like paid media. I can tell you exactly where our money went. I can sure. tell you exactly what it costs to acquire, blah, right. blah, blah. And then when we talk about conventions, I can show you how big it was. I mean, I can show you what occurred. Um, and I, 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 it's hard to measure the hearts and minds of fans. Right. Um, but I can show you uh, what happened. And then we try to build these digital pathways from, okay, you had this offline experience, this in real life experience. Mm -hmm. How can I connect that into a digital story or a digital relationship to kind of keep that going? Yeah. And I think, I think this is, I think what's great for the audience too, is that, you know, you have this amazing, unique brand and, and your role in this company that you're, you're doing this for, but all of these things apply yeah. to every single business. Even, yep. you know, if you are starting it from scratch or you do have an existing mm -hmm. brand. Um, I'm learning more and more that every business has fans. Yeah. And you think, well, anime has fans. I don't have fans like anime. No, every business has fans. Yeah. You know, John Deere, Tractors has fans, right? right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you, you know, your local coffee shop has fans. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah, they may not be as many or the same degree, but there are some people that have true passion about your product. Yeah. And you can amplify their passion and reward that passion and recognize that passion. Um, and I feel like I could take a lot of these skills I'm learning and developing these muscles I'm growing here, and I could take them to a B2B context and I could explain, look, you have fans, you know, IBM, yeah. you've got fans. Right. So, so give me an example of that. How does, how does a, a quote unquote everyday brand or someone who is selling yeah. B2B, how do they apply this? But you know, how do they find those fans yeah. and then ultimately reach them? Yeah, I think a lot of brands ignore the signals that they already get. Um, if, if, so, if a customer is in constant dialogue with you, that means they're taking time out of their day to talk with you. Yeah. And w even if it's about complaining about your product, they are taking time out of their day right. to they're talk with you. They're invested at some they're level. They're invested. Yeah. So what could that mean? Instead of treating that as an annoyance, what could that mean for you? What could you, you, know, what you glean from that? Um, we talk about listening a lot in every digital marketing context. Social listening comes up a lot. Customer service listening is also as important. Uh, yeah. All of these things are signals that we may find customers that really, really love and use our product. And then there are other things like looking at if, let's say you have a software product, looking at the users of your product and which ones are actually in it every day. Which ones are actually using it every day? Which ones are um, suggesting new features? Um, and then can you react to that? Right. Can you react to that feedback? Um, I and think then also can you proactively look at that yep. data and then go ask them like everything's probably fine but let's get ahead of something yep or... yep one of the things that we've discovered and i think it's more of a thing i've discovered it should be well known but in funimation uh fans want to know what we're doing with titles they want to know when things are being released etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. they also want to know behind the scenes they want to know what's going on behind the scenes. What are we thinking? They want to know what we're thinking. I didn't know someone wanted to know what I was thinking. <laughs> right. But they want to know what are we planning for Anime Expo? What are we planning for yeah. the next launch of Dragon Ball? What are we planning for? And you know, some of those things we can talk about with them. And you have to open the kimono, if you will, a little bit and talk yeah. about that. But there are ways that we could bring them into that story. And then if we oh, do yeah. that and bring them into that story, they're invested earlier Absolutely. on in that story. And they get and, to be a part of it. And you guys are doing that at, at, at several levels. I mean, you've got original programming. Mm -hmm. You've got, talk to me about some of that. Yeah, um, we are constantly changing and moving and shifting. As we are basically a media company, mm -hmm. uh, it's not just about the media being our episodes or our movies, yeah. but also what we create around that. Um, and, and where sometimes that comes to life in terms of like what you might consider episodic material where we do a behind the scenes interview with a voice actor or a director or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's much more formal. Um, we're also seeing a lot of traction around the more ephemeral as everyone's seeing Instagram stories, Snapchat. Uh, you know, these are th these quote unquote vertical video formats. Um, these formats are not near as formal. They're not near as laid out. Um, also live, live streaming via Facebook or Twitch is also very powerful for us. You know, these formats are not as scripted, but they're very, very powerful. 
oh, yeah. where we can take a fan inside a movie premiere that we're doing. We can take a fan inside of uh, the studio with a voice actor. We can take a fan, um, you know, behind the scenes of what we're working on or just showing stuff about our day. Now, there's lots of things about our offices that would blow someone's mind, and we just take them for granted. Right. And we need to remind ourselves that, you know, this is amazing stuff. Yeah. And again, most of, most people don't believe it out there, um, but that is a lesson you can take into yeah. your business because this stuff is every day for yeah. you. And even if it is a software product mm-hmm. and it's people on a bunch of computers, they want to see some of that insight and yep. some of the, the humanness, some of the the mechanism behind, yep. you know, in the machine. Um, and, and I think you guys are doing great. What, what kind of response have you gotten? And then how are you sort of measuring that to see, okay, more of this yeah. or let's shift here? Oh, well, we get response in the bucket load nice. <laughs> or by the gallon. Um, I, I'm very excited about a few things. One thing I'm excited about is we recently opened our own Discord server. Now, I have to explain a couple things. Discord is like Slack for gaming. So you probably already know about Slack if you're in a B2B context. Yes. Gamers use Discord, and Discord's a very well-known service in that side. Okay. So we opened a server, which means we have our own Slack channel, basically. Um, and we invited fans in. Now that's scary because, you know, we were worried about fans, what they might say, what they might do to each other, what they might, how they might act. So we started working with some fans that were very passionate about our brand and had worked with us on our forum and we worked with them as moderators and they're moderating and helping to moderate our Discord channel. And so that's been a very good relationship. You know, we've started to develop some policies and procedures and our community manager, Jay, has done a great job with that. In setting up, guys, this is what how we're gonna play. <laughs> this is right. the rule. There's the boundary of the sandbox. Right. Um, you know, when we first opened up the channel, I had the band hammer out, and so did everybody else. <laughs> if, yeah. if people came in and started posting things we didn't want to see in that channel, maybe whatever, you know, fine. Yeah. But the reality is, some of our content is, you know, moves and butts and stuff like that too. Yeah. So we have to, you know, find that healthy that balance. Yeah. But what's cool is now that we've kind of even that out. Now we're having really cool conversations. We're doing like interviews and AMAs with people that aren't voice actors or directors. Wow. You know, like our logistics coordinator got on there and did an AMA. And what's really cool is he's a freaking encyclopedia of anime. Oh, wow. So, yeah, people are asking him about, well, what about this title from 1999? He's like, oh, yeah, I watched that. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> having that conversation with them. That's great. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Uh, to open yourself up to that real-time context. Um, we've done more with Facebook Live, uh, and we've done more with YouTube Live and Twitch, all as tools for uh, bringing someone into our contexts live. Wow. Um, we've done a lot with Instagram Stories, we've been very successful with that. Um, we've done a lot with GIFs. Uh, so we have developed some really strong relationships with both Giphy and Giphy Cat uh, to where you know, we speak GIF, you know, and we have to get that out there. Yeah. That's part of our media now. Oh, that's, um, oh, that's really interesting. Which is so really weird sure for us. Making that that's content that people yeah. are pulling up as an option for them and yeah. to communicate in. Oh, wow. And we, how do we explain a dub in a GIF that has no audio, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> how, do we, how do we do that in a five second, two second, half a second, you know? But we want to use GIFs because fans use GIFs as their way to express their emotions. Oh yeah. They'll take that moment from that anime and be like, that's how I feel. And so they'll use that to express how they feel. This and that moment gets it out into the culture even more. Exactly. Right. Yeah. There's a scene, there's this show called My Hero Academia. Uh, one of my favorite anime that's very recent uh, came out uh, a couple years ago. My Hero Academia basically the gist of it is X-Men go meets anime goes to high school. So um <laughs> One of the coolest scenes that I've seen, the gift that comes out, is there's this scene where this young version of our hero is at his desk watching a video, basically a web video of his favorite hero, and he's got his hero's action figure and he's going, (laughs) and people use that all the time to express, like, I'm feeling so excited, yet I'm feeling so tense, yet I'm feeling so excited. So they're just using that gift to to, to talk about that thing, that moment. Oh, that's awesome. Um, And then they speed it up to like lightning speed and goes, (laughs) it's really funny. That's what we do. That's how we express these brands as cultural touchstones. That's 
bridging the connection, you know, to something that's passion and, 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 and beloved is you have to start creating these, uh, these languages that fans can use to express their love about your media. That's fascinating. That's fascinating too, yeah. because to even, th I hadn't even really thought in those contexts and that's mm -hmm. kind of taking, okay, this is happening out here. This is happening out here mm -hmm. and putting that together as a proactive means yeah. of reaching more people and yeah. I'll tell you That's another really story. Exciting. We we recently we work with Crunchyroll on a title called Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice is a figure skating anime, and yeah. it's it's made the internet lose its mind, just lose <laughs> its freaking mind for a lot of very good reasons. Um, and one of the things we did recently, kind of as a lark, our brand manager, who I admit this is her idea and it was brilliant, uh, she purchased a billboard for the home video release outside of the U.S. Figure Skating Championships. And it's up right now, it's in San Jose right now, you can go see it. Uh, there's a billboard and one at the bus stop uh, right near that uh, convention center. Um, Johnny Weir, who is, happens to be a fan of the anime and is doing the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, shared an Instagram story yesterday of the billboard and was saying, this is so awesome, this is so great, this is so amazing. And, and you know, that billboard cost us maybe like 5,000 bucks. You know? Yeah. So just it, insanely cheap for that, that kind of exposure. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's it's very very smart marrying of a cultural moment uh, with the behavior of the fan with the right message of the right time and, just and using making that traditional sauce. media what leads mm -hmm. into brand new digital media yep. and oh that's yep. awesome. and we actually saw a sales spike you know <laughs> in, in relation to that. So now I can actually stick the landing and talk about ROI because exactly. look I know there's some causality here because at least some time relationship occurred. Oh yeah. That's just, that's just fantastic. And then how are you, I mean, is there a certain, with developing those kind of ideas with you and your whole mm. team, is that very sort of purposeful, dedicated time each day? Is that, you um, know, inspiration on the, <laughs> yeah, on the moment? Yeah, it's, it's all of it. Okay. Um, there are lots of times when we're sitting down to brainstorm and talk about ideas. And I always think about Walt Disney when he says he wanted to, his job was to plus the idea, mm -hmm. right? And that's a really cool idea. How can we make it bigger? How can yeah. we make it better? Um, we're doing a promotion with Bandai Namco on the new Dragon Ball game, which is called Dragon Ball Fighters. And it's a yep. fighting game. Uh, so we're having the voice actor for Goku and the voice actor for Vegeta they're going to fight uh, on the game. Yeah. And we're like, well, they're we're gonna do this at an esports arena and all this stuff. Um, when they come out, they should be wearing boxing robes. Like that would be really cool if they're yeah. wearing boxing robes. And we're like, oh yeah, and then we should, and then it just snowballs from there. Just play, okay, yeah. Um, and so that's an idea of like a planned brainstorm where we had this moment and we said, okay, we're gonna do this thing, we wanna make it happen. How do we act, make it better? Yeah. There's other moments where um, like Arby's used, well, they use anime all the time in their social content, but they used one of our titles at one point. And so we started this, uh, and Lauren, our uh, social content producer, had this great idea to start, you know, kind of this back and forth with them. So they did this little thing about a character from Seven Deadly Sins, which is an anime we have with Netflix. Um, and it's a little piggy. And we have these like little squishy piggies, <laughs> uh, like uh, stress ball piggies. Uh -huh. uh, so we got uh, Arby's bag and we did a little heart and we had these gif of marching piggies while in a heart around the Arby's bag. <laughs> you know, kind of as a response, a thank you to them. So. You know, that was something that she just did in the moment. She just snatched up all the things and like literally is laying on the floor in our office is like, this is shooting this thing. Um, she did this amazing shot, this little gif of um, our, one of our partners is Loot Crate. Um, and, and Loot Crate created in their anime crate some uh, teacups that were related to a title called Mushi Sheep. So Lauren created this awesome gif where it's overhead on this tatami mat and there's the cups there and there's tea there. And she made, uh, she got some dry ice and it was blowing in this like fog. And it's like this really serene, calm moment. And that piece of content just blew up, took off wow. for us. So it is this, it's a real skill to yeah. um, take this content, put it in a context uh, that relates to your fan and that gives them something they say, oh wow, I wanna share that because I think it's awesome, because it explains how I feel, because mm -hmm. it makes me look cool. Oh uh, yeah. All but, of those things. But also too, it's like, 
like you've, you're creative, you have creative people around, but at the same time, it's not insane. Uh, wow. A giant hog. Giant hog. <laughs> wow. Sorry, folks. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't stop. Um, you know, it's 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 more about in, in all of those things. It's more about being purposeful. Yes. That I'm going to find yeah. that interaction. That I mean, the thing with 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 Arby's. That's a simple execution, right? Yeah. But it's that purposefulness. Yeah. To go about that, and yeah. I also love. I love the idea. I love the spectacle like, yeah. that, yeah. you know, yeah. finding ways, like you mentioned, the voiceover folks are going to do this game and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's typically done in the studio and you yeah. <laughs> sit behind yeah. closed doors, but then you, 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 you said, how can we make this an event? Yeah. How can we make that spectacle? Yeah. And I love that. And that is done so little yeah. in this world, certainly in a business context. I won't say this is Funimation's policy, but my... I policy is I feel this responsibility. If we want to be a beloved brand, we have to do things that are lovable. Mm, and that's great. it's so daring to do some of those things. Like it, it's very, very easy to do the usual ROI things. Um, and it's very, very hard to do the things that are not as measurable, but could be just beloved right you know? and just off the chart right and, and, yeah. and, and so you have to step you have to buy a billboard outside of the US figure skating champ you know you have to do right. crazy stuff like that um, and no it's not all your budget but you save a portion of your budget to do crazy things yeah um, because you you believe it'll have a return and sometimes it won't and sometimes sure. it just won't click but but there's you, enough got times an that investment it wins. there yeah yeah so what's what's next what is sort of like are there new areas you're digging into, mm. um, even just the evolution of the brand, what's what's kind of next? Let's see, live and real time are buzzwords that are very hot right now um, that we've been working with a lot. You know, we want to continue to do that via channels like Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Discord, mm -hmm. uh, even Twitter, seeing some resurgence there. Um, we want to uh, do more engaging content, you know, I we are already doing that, but we could do even better. You know, bringing fans more into our story. Mm -hmm. um, we want to do more things that have a, a, a pat that build passion for the brand, um, and, and so we want to do more things that aren't strictly handcuffed by a CPA. Uh, that doesn't mean we get to spend money where we feel, feel like it, sure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we, we want to find a better balance there. Um, and I think what's next in the broader terms of the industry is just digital. Um, home video is something that's still very, very strong in anime because anime fans want to collect. They want to own ah. the home video. And that's where the, the Funimation has been built on home video quite yeah. a bit. But the future is streaming. The future is watch anywhere, anytime. Sure. So The new wave of folks yes. coming through for sure. So Funimation now, being that product that we use to stream and share anime, you know, what's cool is it shrinks the amount of time between Japanese airing and fans engaging with an English dub. Oh, we, yeah. we have what we call simul dubs, where we're taking an episode and as soon as, or earlier than, two weeks after it airs in Japan, we have that episode with an English dub up on Funimation now. <laughs> so you can be engaged with the anime, and if you want to watch it in English, which a lot of fans do, you can still be part of that zeitgeist in that moment. You mm -hmm. can still be on top of it week over week over week and still be on uh, part of that conversation. Yeah. And even more, I think the dubs, for me, add a lot of flavor uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, expand the story for me. Um, and so fans, you know, there's always this debate about sub versus dub, but fans can you know, really start to be on the same level uh, mm -hmm. because they're getting a dub just as fast. Oh, yeah. That doesn't happen in physical media. That doesn't oh, happen no. in home video at all. Oh, the cycle yeah. on that is, can be, oh, can be so long. Yeah, bad. yeah. That's awesome. This year, 2017, I'll say it's 2017, we're in 2018. 2017 was a huge year for us theatrically. Um, and that was primarily driven by a movie called Your Name. Uh, hmm. which your name we took to theaters it is the highest grossing anime of all time uh, wow. in Japan uh, and if you look at worldwide earnings according to box office mojo it's in the top 25 
for 2017. That's right up there with every single other major studio movie. J.J. Um, uh, Abrams has already uh, licensed it for a live action adaptation. Um, it, and we, Funimation, this little studio in Texas, was the ones that brought it to theaters. That's incredible. Um, so in February, that was like all consuming is uh, we were bringing your name to theaters. And it's a Amazing movie. It's an amazingly powerful story. Oh, I've got to check that out. Um, it, it's, it's out on home video now. <laughs> nice. But, uh, it was really, really rewarding to bring that to fans um, and to to share in fans' enjoyment of the movie because all, all of us at Funimation just love that movie. I absolutely adore it. Um, and to share in that was just really, really, really powerful. Um, you know, we've done a lot with theatrical from Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F to the new Shin Godzilla movie. Uh, so that's a live action movie. Oh, wow. Uh, so this year we'll bring, you know, nine, ten movies to theaters as well. Um, I don't think any of them will be as big as your name. <laughs> I don't know if that can be done. Um, but we're always excited about like all the different contexts and ways that we can get anime in the lives of fans. Um, and if theaters is a way, then we want to make that happen. Uh, and, yeah. you know, for a lot of our content, that is one of the great ways to get it in their hands. Yeah, because it, it, it really, it's just, it's just incredible because it is, it is fitting from everywhere, from the biggest screen yep. down to the smallest screen. Yes. And you yeah. guys are there along yeah. the whole spectrum. Yeah. We're, uh, you know, our streaming platform is on eight different types of devices, you know, PlayStations, Xboxes, Roku's. And I never realized how hard that is until we got <laughs> into doing it. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult to provide an experience. I'm jealous of what YouTube and Netflix and Hulu can do. Uh, and we do our very, very best to provide an experience uh, that gets out of the way and lets you watch anime and yeah. lets you just enjoy it. That's awesome. Well, give, give us those details. How do, how, how do um, the folks out here yeah. kind of dig uh, in and find you even more? Funimation.com. Uh, you can watch about 40% of our catalog, our, our titles, for free with ads. Uh -huh. So you don't even have to subscribe. Um, in total, on Funimation now, there's over 13,000 episodes of content. That's over 400 titles. Um, you, you've got a lot of anime to get through. <laughs> right. um, and then if you want to subscribe, $5.99 a month, get you everything you can have, including those simul devs I talked about. Uh, we have titles like Dragon Ball Super, we have Attack on Titan, we have, uh, we have dubs of almost all of these major anime uh, that you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, that's one of our main ways of interacting with fans. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, follow us on social media. We're on all those platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, those are all places where you'll get to see that inside story oh, yeah. um, and those behind the scenes moments. Um, Instagram stories, those are really, really cool moments that we get to share. Uh, and that's where you really get to see kind of behind the scenes of what we're doing. So uh, I think those are some of the great places to, to get an idea of what anime fandoms really like. Oh, that's that's yeah. wonderful. And if you're brand new to all this and all that world, <laughs> go to fanimation.com. You've got a lot of catching up to do. That you do, yes. <laughs> In a good way. Eric, thanks so much for being on. This has been My fantastic. pleasure, my this pleasure, awesome. thanks. I hope you had as much fun as I did uh, hearing from Eric and really getting that insight into how Funimation is handling um, their fan engagement, but also how we can all do that as well. You know, I, I, I preach to everyone who will listen, right, that, that every business is a media company. And it's, it's so true, and it's only becoming more true. And that's why I, I wanted to bring um, Eric's insight onto the show and really hopefully convey a lot of that to you watching that... Here's all these things that an actual media company does to engage their fans and grow that fan base. Um, but each one of those things can be done in some form or fashion by everyone in business and not only can be done, but should be done. And so I highly encourage you to, to, to dig in and take some of those things to heart and see how they can apply to your own business. And if you want help with any of that, make sure, reach out to me. Head over to croftmediaco.com, find out, you know, a little bit about what we do, and jump in, reach out to me, and I'm glad to help, you know, create your own podcast, jump in with some video work, or just have a nice strategy session. So thank you so much for watching. If you're, you know, liking episodes like this, make sure you subscribe. 
uh, here on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, uh, subscribe there. Leave us a review, if you will. Helps us get found in the whole ecosystem. And we'll see you on the next one. It's Saturday night. It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later's Dr. Beatmaker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my steed so I commence with the digging No kidding, something that'll keep the beats hitting what I'm getting so much to choose from, bro.